Hey there, toy collector friends and Transformers fans alike. Welcome back to the channel. I am the Triple TC, the time traveling toy collector, and this is a, well, I don't want to call it a review as such because it, I don't think that's, you know, that does it justice. Um, uh, or it does it too much justice, but it's it's like an appreciation or a reflection on these two feet characters from the Transformers the movie, um, the Studio Series range, Studio Series eighty six range from uh, Takara Tomi and Hasbro, and uh, this is uh, this is really just ent huge entertainment value from my point of view. So um, these are core class figures, and here we have the Decepticon Rumble and Decepticon Frenzy, who we can see are. Uh, Decepticon Rumble is blue, and Decepticon Frenzy is red. And uh, you can't really see, because they're sort of set back in the boxes, it's quite hard to get any sort of decent light in there, which is why I'm sort of standing them awkwardly here until I get them out of the packaging, which will be imminent, do not worry. Um, but I just really wanted to, to sort of do these two together, because obviously one came out um, first. The irony is, at this stage in the game, I can't remember which. I think <laughs> I think it was Rumble that came out first a while back, but I've sort of st um, staved off doing anything with him because uh, I knew that Frenzy was coming out. Um, and it's it's this is more entertainment, really, because, they're, you know, they are, to all intents and purposes, let's just address the elephant in the room. They are the same figure recolored. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, that's the truth of it. They're the same, the exact same figure. They're just recolored. Um, and there's this whole um, sort of fandomonium, shall we say, uh, in the fandom about um, which which one is which. <clears throat> and I and I really, it, it, it tickled me when it first happened. I know other people have talked about it and that's that's lovely. Um, but I'm going to talk about it as well because you know why not? Um, it tickled me immensely when we when they re when they released Decepticon Rumble Blue, and of course then they've they've mirrored that with Decepticon Frenzy Red. Now I have to sort of ask this, and I'm sure others have. Uh, what's the point <laughs> of putting blue and red on the boxes? Because a and apologies if you're if you suffer from color blindness. I don't know enough about it to say whether or not red and blue is something you would be able to you know discern. Um, but they don't do it with any of the other transformers, um, because to me this would imply that this is the Decepticon Rumble blue version, and you can also get a Decepticon Rumble in an alternative color. Uh, and the same with Decepticon Frenzy. Now I know there was some confusion. Uh, back in the day with the original cartoon and, you know, about which was which. And there is there are numerous comments and discussions and essays and uh, threads and God knows what, where people have dissected which is which. There's, you know, on the Transformers Wiki, there's a whole section dedicated to the whole Rumble is... Um, friend, uh, friend. Frenzy is red, rumble is blue, or whichever way round it is, um, sort of, or, or vice versa. And I think there's even charts. There's charts. Um, I mean, it's 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 brilliant, really, the level of engagement. But for goodness' sake, I'm you know, I'm, it just it just makes me laugh. And I love the fact as well that you think the whole blue and red comment on the packaging. Which I think, yeah, it even follows through to the to the reverse. So we've still got blue, and I'm assuming we've still got red. Yeah, red and blue on the back of the boxes as well. So you know, it's uh, it's really it's a significant factor of their identity. Um, you know, so one identifies as red and one identifies as blue. But here's the thing that cracks me up even more. This this is not what I call blue. I mean, there's some blue highlights but folks this is this is purple this is lilac if i'm being generous but it's <laughs> it's not blue and arguably the blitz that are blue marry it and there's some red on him just seen so watch out it's gonna go crazy but we've also got um frenzy over here who is discernibly described as being red and i'm looking at him I'm seeing, well, actually, I'm seeing black, 
with some red highlights. So, you know, things can get seriously confusing here. But at least, at least they've gone with really, really um, discernible, because we know how much we love the packaging and the artwork on the packaging of our Transformers. We know that that's a key staple of Transformers lore. Well, I love, I love the quality of the pack. I'm going to zoom in quickly for you to see this because it's just classic stuff. Um, so not so much there, but more the more the, the the top there. You can see how the artwork, because because this is core class, we don't have an awful lot of packaging to work with. So they're doing. We've mainly got this sort of flap at the top. Um, but they've they've put all the work in to make these two characters utterly discernible from each other. Oh, hang on, no, the pictures are identical. They've just been recolored. So uh, again, they've done absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's just brilliant to differentiate between these two characters. Uh, so you know, you can't you can't not love it. You can't not love uh, a good bit of of transformery debate. Um, and goodness knows this gives us absolutely plenty to debate. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to take a look at the figures and go, actually, they're really cool because they look really cool. Interestingly, the one thing they have done differently is how they've... Um, actually, probably it's easier for you to see them if I leave them in the boxes for now. They've actually got different uh, packaging approaches. So here, uh, Frenzy, red, uh, 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 is, got, is sort of tied in with a band across his chest and his arms. And here, Frenzy, uh, sorry, <laughs> Rumble, that's going to happen a lot. So you're just going to have to uh, ease up in the comments and go with it because it's just going to be too much. Uh, Rumble Blue um, has been sort of pinioned. So his his arms are uh, sort of being almost, he's being almost ultra magnus. Same with the legs, actually. Um, so interestingly, they've taken that, that sort of step to differentiate them in terms of how they're tied up in their boxes. But yeah, the whole red blue thing is bonkers um, because it would have been enough to say this is Rumble, this is Frenzy, because we can see what colour they are. Again, colour blind people or people who are colour, um, whatever the, the whatever the, the correct phrase is. Because again, as I say, I don't know whether blue and red would be something that you can discern. Um, but but the, I think adding this to the package does not help. It just goes. So when do I get the red Rumble and the blue Frenzy? Because it's rumble. You don't need to go that he's blue. He's, you know, that's rumble. That's frenzy. Job's done. You don't go, oh, Optimus Prime. Red and gold, uh, red and silver. Ooh, Nemesis Prime. Black and purple. Do you? You don't. At least I've not seen it. So anyway, that's me having hysterics. And that's not... That's just the boxes. I haven't even taken them out of the boxes yet. Um, so they core class, they did the, they are the cassettes, they're spy cassettes. I really hope this means, and I'm sure we will, because I think it was mentioned in the leak, but I don't believe necessarily all the leaks until I see the things in front of me, um, that we might be getting a Studio Series 86 um, sound wave, and that's great. I'm really optimistic that these will fit in within that, and wouldn't it be great to get the same in terms of Ravage and laser beak etc possibly packed in with him i don't know that might be what makes him he might be a leader class i don't know this is speculation don't don't look at me like i know what i'm talking about um i can't even get the names right when they're written in front of me with the colors to code it so let me get them out of the packaging um and we'll spend a few minutes looking at them and what they turn into spoiler they turn into cassette tapes sort of um uh, if you even know what cassette tapes are these days uh, and I, what I like is the sort of the, um, uh, the pile drivers. That for me is a real huge uh, bonus feature. Anyway, let me get them out of the packaging and uh, I'll be right back. So here we are. We have them back in action. Uh, we have Rumble and Frenzy out of the packaging um, and doing what they do best, causing mayhem uh, on behalf of the Decepticons. And actually... They're quite cute little figures. They are dinky, tiny little figures. Um, but because they're core class, you know, even getting up close and personal, there's not a huge amount that um, you can really get to see. But we will nevertheless, uh, let's get as close as we can. I'll try and do this so you can really get a sense of the, the face sculpt in the light, really, because I think the light is really important for us to, to get that uh, face sculpt. It's a dinky little face sculpt, but it is cute. 
uh, complete with the visor. Um, and he is a bit of a rascal. You can sort of sense that. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more for you, if I can, just to make life a bit easier. There you go. So you can see a bit more of the head sculpt. Um, there's not much uh, in terms of articulation. The arm's very much not articulated. Um, and all the articulation you've got is based on the need for um, transformation. I've popped his sort of gun things on his arms. Um, he does, of course, come with the pile drivers, the legendary pile drivers. Um, and I'll talk about those uh, in a moment. Um, but yeah, so this is his, this is the blue iteration of the figure, um, which is, of course, uh, <laughs> rumble. Um, you can see from the back, there's lots of hollow parts. There's lots of hollow bits, um, uh, which is a shame, but it's a core class. You know, it's not, it isn't, there's not a lot. We're not expecting a lot to be going on with this. Uh, and he has limited posability around the, the feet and around the uh, knees, uh, the hip joints and the shoulders and the, and the head's a bit wibbly wobbly. That's about all we get. Um, in terms of the pile drivers, I'll tell you why I'm disappointed about these. They look great. You can see what they look like uh, on Frenzy there. And I think, you know, they, they do actually look pretty good in, in, a, in a sort of dynamic pose situation. But there's these two buttony things that aren't buttons. They're false buttons. Now, I love it when Transformers give us, us, us some faux features um, that might be a faux, a faux chest or a faux, or what we think might be a head, and it's not. And all this clever stuff that I, I think is really quite good misdirection, the transformation. I, I'm here for that. But these look like, you know, if I press this, this section's going to go up and down, and it's going to sort of be a pile driver. Um, th they're kind of faux buttons. They don't do anything. So that's what the in interior of it looks like. You see, it's just hollow, so that his, his hand, you can sort of turn his hand in and pop it in there, and it'll hold them, the way we've got... Um, frenzy doing here but this yeah these two buttony things there, there's a suggestion i mean it's implied it's not ever explicit nor is it nor does it actually happen but i to me that looks a bit like there's a feature there where we can actually make the pile drivers pile drive um and we can't so you know it's i think that's a little bit of a shame i appreciate again it's core class we're not paying for lots of features i just think if you're going to do some paneling molding you could have done something that wasn't going to make us think it did something it doesn't do. Um, I could be being ultra nitpicky, you know, and feel free to tell me if you think that's the case. But I'm just saying. So over here, you can see I've posed him a little bit. It gives you an indication of what his posing could be like. Um, and I've put his arms in, in this configuration. Uh, again, you can see the, uh, the head sculpt there. It's pretty nice, not too dissimilar from his brother, cousin, uh, whatever you want to classify uh, his cassette buddy as being. Um, again, you can see. Now, interestingly, um, the illustrations, and I haven't looked at the, the instructions, to be fair, suggest that we should have the ball joint facing the front for this. I don't really know why we would do that. Um, well, there's one thing we, we, we'd do it, but that's so that we can have some forward moment, momentum in, and m movement in the uh, shoulders. But actually... I don't think it looks very aesthetically pleasing having having his little ball joints on display. I prefer personally that iteration. So that's the one that I've gone with. Um, and you can still got a little bit. You got enough because there's the sort of the, the sort of peg uh, joint in there that facilitates the movement and the positioning that you would want. Um, but yeah, you can do it the other way around if you so wish. But for me, I think we're kind of we're probably kind of oh sorry, we're probably kind of there in terms of in terms of that. So, and that's it for the robot modes. I mean, their their robot modes are very straightforward. They are sort of these mischievous little cassette chaps who pop out, can create havoc, um, can cause mischief, and can pound things in a very poundy kind of way. Um, and why wouldn't you? Um, so let's let's just get to the next stage of this um, where we can have a look at them in cassette mode. I think they're really adorable. I just think that's a little bit of a shame. You can see again here just about on the side of the figure where the um, the buttons, the faux buttons are pulled out uh, and they don't do anything. It's just a little bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, let's transform them into cassette mode and you can see them in that. And here we are. Here we have uh, Rumble and Frenzy in their cassette modes um, 
and they do pretty much what you'd expect them to do. They look like a couple of mini cassettes. Now again, mini cassettes from back in the day were a thing. No, it's very retro now. Not that I have a problem with retro. This is the other side where you can see his chest and the circuitry. Um, I think they look almost, I think there would have been a bit of mileage, you know, if ever we sort of went back to the sort of um, mini cassette theme, because I appreciate it. it's very much of its time. It's very much of the 80s. Um, but it's, they could, you know, if we, if we were bringing these back as a modernised version, they'd almost be like some sort of data storage um, things, wouldn't they? Um, but, you know, they, 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 do they look as much like tapes as the originals did? Mini tapes as the originals did? There's a part of me that thinks they don't. Um, but that could just be me and letting my nostalgia get ahead of myself. I do like the coloration. I do like the suggestion. That it's got one of those sort of old fashioned 1980s stickers across it. Um, his head's kind of obviously tucked away. I mean, everything is obviously tucked. Everything is tucked. There's not an awful lot of um, subtlety about this. Um, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. They are exactly what they are and they're core class figures. And I think for that, they do, they do quite well. Um, and here we have uh, Frenzy giving us the same cassette vibe again with the... Um, I still think that the, 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 the black with the, the silver and, and the red highlights, the black is almost more dominant looking at this rather than... So the fact they're going Frenzy red uh, is a little bit, you know... And again, look at the back. How much red versus black and gold is there? Not a huge amount. So I just, yeah, I think that's... It's just, it's just playing into the, the um, phantasmagorial madness of the whole frenzy and rumble debate but that doesn't make it any less fun um and i'm here for fun um so they do look quite good i you know i, I like them as figures i'm here for them as figure as figures i'm glad i've got them again it's another entry into the studio series range a bit of a frivolous one and i know i didn't sort of show off Fre uh, rumble when he first arrived but i knew we were getting frenzy and i thought well actually i'll wait till i get them both and then i can put them side by side and to be fair, in all honesty, do they do a lot? No. Are they a bit fun to have? Absolutely. So do they have? A, do they warrant a place in your collection of Studio Series 86 stuff? Um, I wouldn't say that they... I'd be clamouring to get them if I just didn't have a thing for the Studio Series 86 G1-esque uh, figures. So, yeah, I'm, I'm biased. I'm going to be saying yes. But And also, I, again, if we do somewhere down the line get a, genera get a Studio Series 86 Soundwave then I think these figures, and if we get any other ones released as the core uh, core class, that should be um, Soundwave's spy cassettes, then I think, in all honesty, these might start to become a little bit more collectible than people might be realising at the moment. Because my guess would be, at some point in the near future, and it's hard to tell, because some of the um, Studio Series, early Studio Series 86 stuff, like cup and blur for example um you can find them very very reasonably priced and by that i mean quite cheap uh, on the secondary markets you know they, they, there's a there's there's they're out there um so i could be way off on this one but i would just be mindful that we could find these less available and if you wanted to have that full sound wave experience you might kick yourself if you didn't have these because they're because they may then get re-released somewhere down the road and they may be in the primary market more expensive to pick up than these core class are now that's just a thought i have no inside information and i'm definitely definitely not saying this is a marketing strategy i'm not I, and that's not i'm not being ironic or sarcastic i'm really not saying that so please don't think i am it's just my personal take and why i'm glad i've picked these up because i you know obviously if there is a G1-esque Studio Series 86 sound wave down the road. I, I'm getting it. It's not a discussion. And these these two are going to be a feature of my of my sound wave display and collection. 120%. Um, but as I say, do they warrant a place in your collection? I know you really know the answer to that. But I would say if you want some fun little figures that aren't too expensive to add to your brood of um, Studio Series 86 figures... These two core class guys, they are great. They're fun to mess with. They don't do a huge amount. Um, they're, they're, 
they're a little stiff which is quite nice because but for me they're both fresh out of the box now um, the accessories are infinitely losable so I'm just going to demonstrate here are the blasters that you get with them um, again find a way to store these because they are going to disappear very easily to be honest in the same way that these might you know they're very the the, um, the these uh, pile drivers they're the sort of things that could roll under a sofa and never be seen again uh, so you know I would I'd keep them safe just because a, a complete a complete figure <clears throat> a complete figure so excuse me it's been a long day is a happy figure um, and a complete figure that's a happy figure makes for a happy toy collector um, whether it's you or the person that gets it after you if your intention is to pass it on or, or even sell it on at some point so that's it for the studio series core class frenzy red and rumble blue I'm still going with purple though mostly purple you know that's violet lavender i mean yeah you know, which way do you want to go don't care blue it's a push but then like, red's a push you know black anyway i'm just being contentious because it's fun and it's my channel so i get to be um, if you've enjoyed this little tiptoe through time, uh, please do like the video. It means an absolute world to me. And if you could drop a subscription to the channel, that would mean even more. Uh, I'm trying to get towards my next milestone in terms of um, viewership. So um, just clicking that subscribe button would, would be absolutely fantastic. And I would be absolutely chuffed to pieces. Um, yeah. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a look around the channel. There might be other things that you're interested in. Um, Transformers, Star Trek, Doctor Who, Battlestar Galactica, Star Wars, uh, G.I. Joe. There's all kinds of stuff. Stuff that's not even necessarily genre related. Um, there's some Eagle Moss collectible stuff. There's Hasbro figures, uh, character options figures. There's a ton of stuff. There's also other stuff that's going to be coming up. There's also some other collectible type videos of stuff that might not be toys per se but are attached and associated with franchises that might be toy related so have a little look around there might be things you like um, and I always hope to see you in a future video thanks for sticking with me for the last 20 minutes or so you've been a fantastic audience I've been the Triple TC the time traveling toy collector and this has been uh, Rumble and Frenzy Frenzy and Rumble from the Transformers Studio Series 86 core class range from Hasbro and Takara Tomy. And it just remains for me to say that things of beauty really are toys forever. Take care and bye-bye for now.